Today's episode is going to be all about one of my favorite coaches, Melissa Lynn. She has certainly helped me a lot also with creating this podcast, by the way. And it has been a lovely conversation on mindset, sales and how to skill your business and a lot of personal touches. Also some cat talk, if you like it. I really enjoyed creating this episode with Melissa and I hope you do too. Let me know and enjoy. This is Big Business with Sarah, the podcast for entrepreneurs who want to continue building their business and understand you should never stop learning. Welcome to this podcast episode. And today I have a special guest with me. I'm talking to Melissa Lynn. She left her well-paying chemical engineering job and go it went all in on running her multiple six-figure business as a business coach. And she's helped me in pivoting my business for the past couple of months. And she's helped me especially in sales and mindset. So that's what we're going to be talking about. Melissa is living in Seattle and she's building a new home from scratch. And she's not afraid to share those updates on her Instagram stories. She lives together with Ryan and Ryan and their one-eyed cat Pearl, whom also from time to time liked to check in on my business. Welcome to my show, <laughs> Melissa. Thank you um, so much, Sarah. Beautiful <laughs> intro. Beautiful intro. Thank I love it. Thank you. Thank you. Well, I've created it with love. And uh, first question is, is Pearl here as well? Or did you put her somewhere else today? She is. Well, she will be popping and she just walked out of the room. Um, but she will be popping back in. I can guarantee we'll see her at some point. I would love to see her again. Um, she's such a great co-coach. <laughs> she loves um, it. She loves it so much. It's so cute when she'll just sit here right in front of the laptop and just stare at you girls. <laughs> Um, so I just introduced you. Um, and did I miss something in my introduction? Is there something you'd like to add uh, for my listeners so they get to know you a bit, a bit better? Yeah, I feel like anytime somebody introduces me, I always need to go into my backstory just a little bit because yes. whenever I share with somebody that I was a chemical engineer turned business coach, I get so yeah. many head turns because they're like, how did that happen? What to push you to do that? Mm -hmm. Like fill in the blanks for us. So I can yes, go ahead and yes. fill in those blanks mm -hmm. with just a few minutes for your audience. If that would be helpful. Um, I would love to there. So yes. I think me, that'll help. Yeah, perfect. Can definitely do so. So growing up, um, I'm half Chinese. So I grew up in a very just traditional family and from a very young age, my parents, of course, and then my grandparents, they actually moved over from Hong Kong and didn't speak any English. Mm -hmm. However, growing up and I kid you not, I share this and people think I'm just being outrageous, but I kid you not when they came over growing up, the two words that they really pushed into my head were doctor and husband. And it's <laughs> what felt safe to them. Right. Yes. And that's also what my parents pushed me to do and like love my parents so much, but like, that's what they were taught. That's how they were brought they up. They told you to become a doctor. Is that what you're saying? Yes. They told yes. me to become okay. a doctor, mm -hmm. find somebody who can also support me and take care of me as well. Mm -hmm. So they pushed me really, really hard. I mean, I was so great with math and science. And so I was actually mm -hmm. going to go down the doctor route um, until first or second year in high school, I ended up passing out in the middle of class. Like when we were taking blood, it was just such a hot <laughs> mess. And so I knew right then and there, like this probably isn't no. the route for me. Like I literally <laughs> dropped to the floor. Like they, oh it was God. just so embarrassing <laughs> as a teenager. <laughs> And yes. like my boyfriend at the time was there, which is like, oh, it's just horrific. So I yeah. knew right there, like I needed to pivot. I needed to pivot to something else. So my parents settled for engineering and I was great with math settled. and science. I know. Yes. I so at age math. 15, you already did your first pivot. I love it. Yes. First pivot. Yes. And so um, we started to go down the chemical engineering route. And so they actually were prepping me even before that. And I actually started taking math classes at a very young 
early, early age. Cause I just excelled so much with it. I was in like the early tag program, talented and gifted and things like that. Um, so wow. I was taking community college classes at the age of 11. And then I started tutoring college students in math at the age of 12. So like my parents just always continued wow. to push me, go above and beyond, um, and just excel at things. And so years later, graduated high school, uh, <laughs> went to college for chemical engineering And I started to work in the real world. So I was a chemical engineer for like five or six years and then started to have those feelings of like, is this really it? Because on the outside looking in, like I had made it, right? Right. I had made it. I had the jackpot and no one could really see what was going on on Mm. the inside. So I was working 12 hour days. I was Mm. working weekends. I was on call like 24 seven, I had one week of vacation and it was frowned upon. If you use any of those days, yes. like literally frowned upon. And that's, I mean, so that's much- incredible. Sorry to, to yeah, interrupt, no. but for instance, in, I think it's in most European countries, um, that n- normal leave would be about five weeks. I mean, that's, that's a little bit the standard and, you know, we are already looking at the U S mm-hmm. like, how can you ever have one week? What are you going to do? Your laundry? <laughs> it's not, you know, <laughs> You can't do anything in that one week, <laughs> but, and then you're just saying like, no, yeah, I didn't even take that holiday. No, because I had never, hours. Yeah. yeah, I had never left the country or even started to travel. Traveling Probably. wasn't really big for my family growing up, but I travel a lot more now because I feel like there's a lot of catch up for me to do. Um, yeah. but I didn't <laughs> even leave in North America until like 2018, 2017 around then for the first yes. time. Yeah. We so, spoke about that. I mean, that's incredible. So crazy. Mm. So crazy. So back to chemical engineering, I was in the real world in my job, um, just working, working, working away. And I remember like one day leaving my nine to five, which was really like a, it's more of like a five to five. So it's there so much. Yeah. But when I was leaving, like my boss was still there. My boss's boss was still there. Mm. And I had like that glimpse into the future of, okay, that's, mm. that's where I'm heading towards. Like, I guess that's what I'm going to be doing just working the rest of my life. Yeah. And I had started listening to podcasts at that time. And I just knew there was something more, there's something bigger. And yeah. I really wanted to create a bigger impact than what I was doing at the time. I was an engineer for a window company and glass company. So like, yes, I was helping build these beautiful windows, but I wanted to do so much more than that. You wanted to bigger. open the windows. <laughs> <laughs> yes. I love it. So yes, yes, yes. So, um, and so at that time, that's when I started to dive into like the online space. I was also very big into health and fitness. And mm. so I was doing um, some bikini bodybuilding competitions at the time as well. So I was Love sharing that. part of that on social media mm. and people started to come and reach out to me. Um, my account was growing pretty quickly and people wanted help with their health and fitness. So like ding, 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 I had a solution for a problem that other people had. And so that's how my first business started. Um, and that's this. how I was going to kind of get out of my nine to five. So started that, did that for quite a few years, scaled that business, mm-hmm. and then eventually did transition and pivot again over to business coaching. Mm-hmm. We can definitely talk about that pivot. Um, but yeah, I left my nine to five early 2018. Yeah. I didn't tell my parents for two months. I was terrified, <laughs> but I did the thing anyways. Like it scared me and I did the thing yeah. anyways. I'm so happy. I will never turn back. And like, it's just, it just gets better from here. It gets yeah. better and better. I think, I mean, this is amazing. And especially the part, and I love that you're sharing this about your parents' expectations. Mm-hmm. Um, also, also ha- carrying a cultural baggage, but as what you're saying, a certain idea on how you should live your life, um, you know, and, and it's, and it can be so hard and it, I think you're a queen in mindset work. Um, mm-hmm. and I mean, I think you did a great job with working on that and it must have probably not been all very easy. <laughs> And, um, yeah, I hope that you, one of your next trips is going to be to Amsterdam so we can finally meet. I would love that actually. Soon, most definitely soon. <laughs> Europe is yes. definitely, there's so much of Europe left for me to explore. So I'm yes. definitely going to be over there soon. Yeah, do so. I would love to. So, um, thank you so much for sharing and being so open about this. Um, so one of the first questions that I wanted to ask you is, I think you're one of the sweetest people I've ever met. 
Mm-hmm. And you're still, I mean, you are, you know, this idea of, you know, very strong women and fierce women running their uh, strong and solid business. And they are maybe not the nicest people, or I mean, not, not seen as the nicest people, because I know yeah. that women get this comment a lot and very, very soon. Um, but what is, what is helping you run your business on your terms? Because I feel mm-hmm. like you really are doing that. Yeah. You know, I think my background helped a lot with that. Just my background in engineering. Um, I mean, when I was in school, I was one of the only females in the classroom, right? It was less than 10% of of females in the classroom. So like, I really had to like step into my power. And there was a moment, I remember this professor, he had actually told me like, he didn't think I was going to make it. Right. Cause yes. I was trying to balance. <laughs> we all I, was know those. To balance <laughs> I know I was trying to balance everything. I was trying to balance yeah. college. I, you know, wanted to be part of the sorority life, but also mm. like have all of the experiences. And he told me like, you're not going to make it. If you like try and have that college experience, like you've got to give engineering your all. Yeah. I think that was also one of the moments where I was like, no, like I'm going to prove you wrong. Like just because I'm this, this, and this doesn't mean I can't do it. And so I proved him wrong. Um, but I think just being in that male dominated world for so long, it really helped me because I had to really like step into my power, but also find that balance, right? Because yeah, yeah. there's so much pressure for women, especially like if we're in the room, because I was in the room with our CEO of every company I ever worked at all of the time leading presentations. So just trying to find that balance there, I think really supported me as I left to start my own business and just learning to really trust myself. I think mm-hmm. that's something that us as entrepreneurs, we really get to lean into. The more you trust yourself, the more you trust those decisions that you make, like you just know at the end of the day, it's going to be okay. Right. Yeah. Regardless yeah. of what happens, like even if it feels like a dumpster fire that day, <laughs> and you feel like your business is going to just burn to the yeah. ground. Like you're going to be okay. You're going to be fine. You're a badass. You're going to be fine. And you can handle it because you trust yourself and everything that you can do. And yeah. I promise you, like anyone listening, you're going to be fine. If you have just something going on in your business or your personal life, I guarantee you six months from now, you're going to look back and like laugh at it or giggle. It's not going to feel as hard as it feels right now. Yeah. I love that. So we've had these conversations every day to <laughs> people who are listening. <laughs> I really needed to hear, hear that. But, you know, sometimes when people are stepping into their power, they are uh, taking over some male dominant features, but you are not. And I just wanted to commend you for that. Um, mm-hmm. And um, could you maybe reveal how you learned to trust yourself? Because it's so easy to say, you should be more confident. You should be able to trust you know, what it, what has been for you one trick or one way of doing mm-hmm. something that has really helped you can you share yeah i would say it's definitely not just one thing um no. it was a lot of more so just personal development mindset work a lot of emotional yes. intelligence work as well i've done a lot of work mm. on emotional intelligence of course you know any kind of therapy but just really working on yourself but number one i would say is just mindset right? Yes. With the mindset that's going to help you shift with that work. Like you can shift anything. 1,000%. So yeah. So that has probably been a huge change for you once you mm-hmm. started working on that. And mm-hmm. also what we spoke about previously. Yeah. I love that. Um, so when you left your engineering career or, Oh, is that, I know she's is coming. That a cat <laughs> coming. You're you, if you're watching on YouTube, you're seeing <laughs> Melissa Trying getting to get her pearl. <laughs> Okay. So we might get a meow from her on the recording. Um, so when you left your engineering career or when you Mm -hmm. pivoted from fitness to business coaching, Mm -hmm. was the life and business that you're having right now, what you had in mind when you pivoted? You know, that is a great question. I would say it's probably better right? It's definitely yeah. more than I, I love that. could have imagined. I think like what I'm bringing in like right now is way more than I ever thought I could. The impact I'm making right now is like more than I ever thought I could. And I would say because of my continued mindset work, like things are just, my mind is just opening more and more, right? Like when I first maybe pivoted, I probably didn't think I'd ever make it to seven figures. And like no. last year we hit seven figures. So it's, Yay. it just gets bigger and bigger. Like multiple seven is coming next then eight. It just, it gets to be bigger and bigger. 
but definitely didn't think so. Um, I would say that COVID probably just kind of stirred everything up for everybody. Nobody saw yes. that coming. So that definitely stirred up. I think the way that my life is shaped right now, I mm. um, didn't think I was going to be like home so much currently, yeah. but you know, I thought I'd be traveling more. So that's not the same. Um, mm. but everything outside of that is awesome. Like I love that I can take the day off if I want to, to go yeah. and spend the day, like just Netflixing and chilling with Pearl, which I do yeah. often. We just finished <laughs> rewatching Gilmore girls. And so oh. we just like, <laughs> the fact that I've got the freedom to do that though, is yes. like amazing. And like yeah. reading books whenever I want to, but just literally shutting my laptop down and stepping away and my business still running, I think it's just yeah. such a dream come true for so many. And it's possible for anybody. You just got to get started. Yes, no, definitely. I agree. And this is also a little bit what my workshop, Big Business, Big Life is all about, which you helped me uh, create and promote. And it's, it's, you know, about visualizing and, you know, what kind of life you want. And, you know, what you're saying now is also I, 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 what I like about this, because I have teach, uh, taught my clients to, because this was a workshop in May, 2022, so I helped them create 2022 to be, you know, how, how to create, make that your year. Mm -hmm. And, but, you know, it would be totally different from, from, for them to join the workshop next year again, or to do these exercises mm -hmm. that they learned from me next year again, uh, because you will always take that next step, you know, always mm -hmm. have, have something else that you can achieve. Yeah. Yeah. My businesses never look the same year to year. It is always no. expanding. It's always shifting. It yeah. never looks the same. It's always different. Yes. You're always building. That's it. You mm -hmm. know, you're never starting over, but it's always building from there. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I love that. Yes. You have been a sales powerhouse from the get-go <laughs> is my opinion, <laughs> but maybe it's not. Um, what is your secret? <laughs> Sorry. My secret <laughs> is always coming from a place of value and just a huge place of service. And that has served me so much in my business um, because it's really helped me fall in love with sales. Um, at the end of the day, if I'm serving, if I'm showing up, like I know sales will come. I like don't even think about it because mm -hmm. at the end of the day, your, your value is your pitch. And so when I first started my business, of course, I didn't have that same mindset <laughs> around sales. I was terrified of my first 10 sales calls that I did. I had my script printed out. I, you know, went through it word by word. I also was <laughs> undervaluing myself insanely. So definitely didn't feel nearly as easy as it does now. But now I sell multiple times a day on all platforms. Like I'm selling all of the time and it probably doesn't even come across that way. But we do so because we're showing up and we're adding so much value in so many different ways on all of our platforms. Yeah. And it's true. It comes from value. You have to show people. And also what you're saying is um, you, you're saying, I know sales will come. And that's probably because you are trusting yourself. So we're back to mm -hmm. that again. So sales and mindset is, mm -hmm. I think, a huge part i mean they're they're so intertwined because you know you can help people so intertwined and it's really interesting as more and more people shift into the online space like we've got to understand that people cannot buy from you unless they know about your offer which yeah. means you've got to talk about your offer and as more and more people get on the online space and as like the instagram algorithm doesn't always serve us we've yeah. got to get it out there even more and it's really interesting i was talking to some of my clients about this last week mm -hmm. we like back in the day a few years ago like we would always say you know your ideal client would need 7 to 10 touch points before yeah. they would be ready to take that next step and we're starting to see it's becoming more than that much more yeah. It's more of like 15 to 20 these days. And yes. like the lead time and the sales lead time is becoming more and more because of some of the stuff going on in the world. Um, but also just things are shifting. And so as entrepreneurs, you've got to be able to adapt to those shifts. Yeah. But at the end of the day, you've got to start with your mindset. No sales strategy will work unless you've touched on your sales mindset and continue to work on it. Like sales mindset is huge. You cannot become better at sales until you start to shift your beliefs and your stories around sales because yes. people can feel it. 
people can feel that when you're live on Instagram, on your sales calls, people can feel if you don't feel good about sales. And so that's a huge, huge, like make or break it for your business as well. Yes. Uh, Yes. I mean, I, I completely agree and, uh, I needed some work. So, you know, that I've been running my business on and off different business, business, uh, different jobs for about 13 years. And I never, ever sold, um, because clients would come to me. I mean, Mm -hmm. it's, it's great, uh, of course, but I really wanted to learn it and it's (laughs) still, you know, it's, (laughs) I can't believe why I've never done this, you know, learned this before, because it's really a skill and Mm -hmm. um, mindset work is a skill and Mm -hmm. actually doing the sale, understanding that you are valuable, that you're really there to help people. That has really helped me because by the end of the day, you need sales to Mm -hmm. run your business. You know, you can't run away from it. (laughs) So no, yeah, you really... don't have a business without it. You've got a hobby. No. Yes. Yeah. Oh, wow. I love that actually. Yeah. Do you? Th- yes. Maybe. Yeah, you do. Actually, you're right. Yeah. yeah. 100%. So. Yes. Um, Very direct. Yeah. Yeah. So what do you love about sales? What is something that is really. That you love? I love sharing with other people that I have the solution for them to help them with whatever result they're looking for, the transformation they're looking for. Like I've got the tools, I can help them get there. I love just letting them know about it, regardless if they want to work with me or not. I just love sharing that opportunity with them. And so I love talking about my offers because I, again, at the end of the day, trust myself. There's that trust again, trust myself and also trust my programs and believe in my programs so much. I'm definitely my biggest fan. You've really got to be, if you want to become better at sales, you've got to really trust yourself and also trust and believe in your own programs. Because if those aren't there, again, it's going to come across. People are going to feel it. You've got to be the most excited about it. If you're showing up on Instagram stories and you're like the Charlie Brown teacher, just talking about your offer to talk about it, but you're not excited about it. No one's going to buy Who wants to do that? (laughs) Yes. Yeah, that's true. I love that you're saying I've been my biggest fan. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So you're the head of your fan club. (laughs) Yes, I am. Well, Pearl's Pearl's pretty close. She's like right there with me. We're like fighting for number one spot. She's pretty close though. (laughs) I would see Pearl as someone who would do the administration and everything, you know, the correspondence with all the fans. (laughs) Make her little pop, her little paw print. <laughs> That's her well, signature. High level business coaching here, ladies and gentlemen, <laughs> listening to this podcast. <laughs> right. But like, you've got to have fun with like whatever business yes. you're doing. And even, even with sales, like anything, you've got to find ways to have fun in your business and enjoy the process and enjoy the business. Um, because if not, like, why are we doing it? Because entrepreneurship is not easy. No, there's a lot of ups, a lot of ups and downs over yeah. the years. I find it incredible when people are running a business in things. I'm, I'm thinking. I mean, maybe your your window uh, business that you've worked for. Mm-hmm. You know what? What you know? I, I always find it very difficult to say to think. You know, what do people love so much about windows? Yes, of course. I mean, you can still look and you're protected and everything. But I mean, what you know? And so really creating that business you love. I also, um, uh, wanted to add, and I think you do that as well. And you like to work with that as well Is that, for instance, for me, it's very important that my clients really want to make an impact on the world. Mm -hmm. Is that the same for you? 1000% because if it's only about the money, you're not going to make it very far. Yeah. Right. If it's only about the money, you are not going to make it very far because those who don't want to make that impact, they're not the ones showing up adding value, regardless no. if you buy or not. Right. There's a reason that we have hundreds of hours of free content for people, like over 200 podcast episodes, <laughs> live video. Like we've got so much content. Yes, it's, you do. it's a little insane how much content we pump out, but it's yeah. a, again, that impact, regardless if anyone works with us or not, we just want to help them move the needle forward. And so I think an impact comes a long, long way. 
And if you've never, one of the books that I send to some of my beginner coaches in my academy is Mm -hmm. The Go-Giver. And I think that's where some of these principles really started Mm -hmm. from. It was one of my very first entrepreneur books I ever read. And it's all about just coming from a place of service and adding value. And as long as you're adding value, like everything else, success will come your way. And I deeply believe that, but showing up adding value and wanting to create that impact. Because again, if- if not, like money's just money. Yeah. We're here to do so much bigger with, especially with everything going on in the world right now. Yeah. Like we, we get to like make our impact and start making some big changes. Yeah, no, I, I agree. I, I didn't know about the book to go giver. I'm going to, I'm going to read it as well. And I completely so agree. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> they have an entire, um, they've got an entire series. They've got the original, but they also, and they're really cute little storytelling. It's all about this one man and kind of his venture through. It's very short, very quick read, Um, but they also have like a sales version. They've got a leadership version, but they're very small, like quick. Um, But just, I would say my favorite book by far. I love that. The biggest impact, especially towards the beginning of my business. Yeah. Yeah. I like, I like that. I'm going to, I'm going to, I'm going to read it. Thank you. Mm -hmm. So, and oh, I did want to mention that um, the podcast of Melissa is really, really lovely. Do check it out. I think, is it, how is it? The Fierce Business Babe Podcast. Babe. <laughs> I know. I it. <laughs> Everything's <laughs> branded the Fierce Business Babe. <laughs> yes, I love that. I love that. All right. And it's also actually written down right behind you um, on the screen. So I should have known. I know, for yeah. now. It'll that'll yes. show up still in, in the new office when we move to the new place, yes. <laughs> um, but it probably won't be right behind me. It'll probably be on my pink wall to the left of me. Yes. But I love that pink we'll, wall. We'll still have shots. Of, shots so there. exciting. So excited for you. <laughs> so you've pivoted. Since when are you a business coach? How long for? I pivoted end of 2018 to business coaching right. and mm. I would love to share my story on the pivot because I know a lot yes. of people have pivoted yes. in the past and I took the messiest action you could have like <laughs> ever imagined and just the universe brought it all together for me and it all worked out, but I Let took me the messiest action. And so it was really interesting towards the beginning of 2018, even end of 2017, I was of course scaling my fitness business online while wrapping up my nine to five. And I had so many coming to me now asking how I was doing that with my business. And so ding, 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 here's another problem I can help people solve. And so I actually started with a free Facebook group first. Mm -hmm. Um, A big part of me knew at some point I wanted to go business. I was, I had actually started applying for MBA programs um, while I was in my engineering job, because I'd always been brought into the meetings with the CEOs, helping them make decisions. Mm-hmm. So when I was an engineer, my main role was a process engineer, um, sometimes project manager, but my goal was yes. to make things more efficient, um, save money, make things faster, um, all of the things. I love it. Yes. I even had um, my Lean Six Sigma black belt. And so mm-hmm. I was all into just efficiency. Wow. And was really being pushed to get my MBA. And so for me, like management was where I was definitely wanting to go as well. If I wanted to continue up that corporate ladder. And Mm so I knew at some point I wanted to, I'm so thankful that I didn't go get my MBA because I lived it myself as I grew my business and scaled it, um, which has been so, so, so amazing. But I was starting to get people to reach out to me and so ding, ding, ding could help them. So I started a free Facebook group because I wasn't sure if I would felt ready to make mm. that pivot. And what I started to notice was I had a free Facebook group for business. And then I also had one for my fitness folks as well, that I was my community that I had there. Mm. And I was noticing I was going into the business group so much more, like probably five yeah. or six times more going live in there two to three times as much as I was the fitness group. Mm-hmm. So I just know, I, I knew I had a natural pull to that group. And so overnight I made the switch. It's like, you know what, right. I'm going to trust myself. I'm going to do this. It's the way I want to go. 
And my partner had like full support. He's like, do it, babe. Like you've been talking, do it, just do it. And so like, what's the worst that could happen? I can always give it back if I want to. Yeah. And so I did it. So that night I let all of my fitness clients know like, Hey, once your package ends, like I'll be wrapping up, but I'll have lots of recommendations for you. Um, But I am making a pivot. And so I literally did it overnight. (laughs) Oh that's incredible. And I think it's so great that you actually also took care of your clients and referred them to other people mm-hmm. uh, so that they, they could be helped again from a place of service. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Yes, yes, yes. <laughs> and so what happened when you, when you first started business coaching? Uh, how did was, you, what was, was the first so two, easy. three months like? It was so easy. Mm-hmm. Um, and also I, will say I probably hit my first bigger stage of burnout um, because I took on so many one-on-one clients Mm -hmm. when I first started as a business coach. I think I had 10 or 12 private clients at one time. um, And I was doing anywhere from 45 to 60 minute calls weekly. Yeah. I remember I traveled, I know, crazy. I remember I went on a two week trip with my boyfriend, Ryan and his family. We went to um, a few spots in Spain and then we also went to Morocco and Mm. I like didn't have boundaries back then. Like I was just kind of starting to put boundaries into place and I spent an entire day doing coaching calls while on vacation, Mm. which I definitely wouldn't do now. Um, But back then I even had clients telling me like, Melissa, get off the phone with me, like go enjoy Spain. Like, what are you doing? So, um, definitely again, year to year, business changes, you grow so much. Yeah. Um, but the first year was definitely great. Like I just skyrocketed like first year as I, I mean, basically starting a new business over, but yeah. I had all the tools. I had the steps. I had done it once yeah. before. So it was pretty easy to make the switch, the pivot, um, mm-hmm. six figures the first year, multiple six, the next, because again, I had done it once. It's very easy to replicate and do again. Yes. So it was fun. It was such a blast. I loved it. I fell in love with it. Um, yeah. and that is also the year that I started my Academy. So I've had it. Oh my goodness. Like four years now coming, coming <laughs> on. <laughs> and it's still around. I'm still going. Because you started with private coaching, right? Mm-hmm. With yeah. 12. So I mm-hmm. started with private coaching and I really created my entire customer journey, like throughout the years of my business. So I started with private coaching and I got maxed out, right? I knew I couldn't serve more people and I wanted to, again, that impact. And so I knew I had to start a group coaching program. So the things that I was teaching my private clients, mm-hmm. I turned into a group coaching program. And then I knew I needed a next level, because I was yeah. starting to get more excited because I had already hit it. Wanted to help more people hit the 10K month. And so, yeah. of course, I was helping some people one-on-one hit the 10K month. And then I knew, okay, I need to create a bigger impact. Let's turn this into a mastermind. Yes. And then, again, the next level, which is now Fiercely Scale, which you've been a part of. That's when I was teaching yeah. my one-on-one clients back in 2019 or mm-hmm. so. So just yeah. continuing to grow, 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 and yeah. continue that customer journey. Um, but just absolutely fell in love with it. So in yeah. love with it. I love it. And you know what I love so much about doing this work and running this business the way um, that I, that I am also doing now, because I also learned it from you is it feels like you're, you're building. I mentioned it before uh, in this, in this episode is that you it really feels like you're bur- building because you know that I've been an interim mm-hmm. manager. I was a, you know, a freelance interim manager. So people would hire me. And then after my job was done, as you are mentioning, you know, you like to, to make processes better. I also mm-hmm. thrive on that. <laughs> Probably that's also why we we both like business coaching, right? Because you mm-hmm. want to help others make better processes or better decisions or help mm-hmm. them along the way. And I remember thinking, I think it was two or three weeks ago, I was thinking, yes, but actually what I'm doing right now, I can build and build and build. It's going to help so much more people and it's going to be all better. So that's what Mm -hmm. I love so much about it. Yeah. Yeah. It's so beautiful to entrepreneurship. Like there is, and I know you've definitely felt this too. Like there is no one right way or wrong way to like build a business. And it's all about building a business that's going to fit your lifestyle and the way that you want to run it. Mm-hmm. I have some clients that only work with clients one-on-one. It's not what yeah. I would ever want to do, but like that's no. what they love and that's what 
they thrive in some that only do courses, some that only do coaching. So there's no one right or wrong way. Mm-hmm. You've just got to build it around that lifestyle that you want. And you can always yes. pivot. You can always pivot. I've yeah. pivoted, yeah. pivoted many times. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so what has been, because you've been so experienced with running this business and what has been your biggest learning this year so far? That's such a great question. And I would say it's just to keep going. Like regardless of what happens, there are going to be like some scary moments in business where you want to shut things down. Like there will be challenges that you face that you've never faced before. Because again, as you go into a new level, you're going to face challenges you didn't face the level before when you're trying to hit 5K months or 10K months. (laughs) And my biggest learning is just keep going. Like you truly can handle anything that comes your way. You've just got to keep going. And that's what I try and remind my clients of as well. And that's like a big lesson just every year. You've got to keep going because again, entrepreneurship will throw challenges at you, Mm -hmm. but keep going regardless. Give it another six months, give it another six months, keep going because people truly need you. People need your help, your guidance, your gifts, and you've got to just keep going. It's so much bigger than just you, right? This is like the impact that you're here to create. It's so much bigger than just you. And that's what I like to also remind my clients about when it comes to sales, like you're, you selling, it's not about you, right? If you're stressed, if you're worried about feeling or looking like a jerk or feeling sleazy, like, yes, you get to have those feels. Of course, (laughs) Um, you get to start to also shift the mindset around that. But if you're so worried about saying the wrong thing on a sales call Mm -hmm. or like how someone's going to feel about you or the judgment coming your way, you're focusing on you and you've got to turn it around. You've got to focus on them, right? Is this the right program for them? Am I the right person for them? Yeah. Are these the tools that they need? And once you start to make that shift, and then there's a lot of that in the Go Giver, so definitely read that. Yeah, I once you start to make that shift, that is when sales is going to change so much for you. When yeah. you just turn the flashlight and really focus on them. Um, same with just business in general. Again, it's mm-hmm. coming from a place of service. It all comes back to that. Yeah. Yes. Yes. I I strongly believe that. And and you know. There is in every phase of your business and also in your life, by the way, you have different challenges, mm-hmm. challenges. And what I always like to think is that, you know, what actually these challenges are good because they, it, it is a sign that I'm growing. It is a sign that I'm stepping out of my comfort zone and I'm getting more towards that life and business that I want. Mm-hmm. Yeah. yeah. Always go towards the thing that scares you. Yes. Yeah. And you're so used to not doing that. <laughs> I know, but oh, life is just too short to stay in your comfort zone. Mm-hmm. It is so short. Is. And I feel like it's past, like, how is it almost July? How <laughs> is it already almost July? Like this year is just flying I know. by. I know. I feel like as I get older, it just goes by yeah. quicker and quicker. Yeah. I'm just like watching the time go by. <laughs> To old ladies podcast I here. Yeah. I love it though. I love my old lady life. I love it yeah. so much. <laughs> I love it. <laughs> Me too. So I have another question. Who inspires you the most? Oh, this is such a great question. Who inspires me the most? You know, I would say my grandfather really inspires me. He passed oh. away. Um, quite a few years ago, but he is just somebody who always challenged me, my grandfather on my dad's side. um, He just always challenged me to go above and beyond and was just such a kind hearted person, but also so brilliant and like said and knew so much was possible for me. So I think he was one of the first who really created that permission slip for me of like, you can do so much. And this is, there's so much more out there. And reminding me over and over that it gets to be bigger. It gets to be better. Like there's no one thing. There's no Mm -hmm. one path for you. And I think that has helped me so much in my life. Also, I mean, because again, personal life and business, right? There's just not one path for you. You're allowed Mm -hmm. to make pivots. You're allowed to do different things. Um, I was previously married and in a pretty verbally abusive relationship and Mm-hmm. I felt that was my only path until I reminded myself, like, no, I get to create my own path, right? I'm a strong, independent woman. Yes. I get to create my own path. 
Mm-hmm. And so just reminding yourself of that. But I would say he's one of the bigger ones that really inspires me. I love that. And I love that you brought his wisdom into your life. And mm-hmm. also in a time when, you know, in your in your marriage, previous marriage, I mean, that it really helped you and guided you. That is amazing. I love that. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Life is short. Story. Life is short. You got to go after what you want. Yes, absolutely. And stop complaining and just do it. <laughs> just do it. Do the thing that scares you. Like there are yeah. so many people doing the things that you wish you could be doing just because they did it. Yeah. It's, you it's, just got to do it. Just jump. What's yeah. the worst that could happen? Well, and I just, I, I just wanted to say about that. What's the worst that could happen? We've talked about that as well. And there's so many things that could have, ha- you know, there. Mm-hmm. so I chose a, a, a certain path, but mm-hmm. I can still go a thousand other paths, you know, and, and that, that's yeah. such a liberating thought. I thought that's really what I learned from you. Yeah. Yeah. Can I share a quick example about when yeah. I left my nine to five? So when I left my nine to five, my partner, Ryan and I, we were living together at the time. And so we sat down and had this conversation. Okay. Like what is the worst that can yeah. happen if you leave your nine to five? What is yeah. the worst that, we could, that could happen? So we of course wanted to make sure that we had, you know, six to 12 months of savings, mm-hmm. like ready to go like, just in case, like the worst that could happen, like realistically, realistically, <laughs> yeah. the worst that could happen is my business isn't as successful right away as I thought it was going to be. And I need to go work a few hours at a coffee shop locally, like during yeah. the day, part-time. Like that's literally the worst. I, I wasn't going to be homeless. Like I, yeah. I had a, a roof over my head. My mm-hmm. partner was going to support me for the time being, or at least those six to 12 months that we had, <laughs> had savings for. Like yeah. you're not going to be homeless. You're There's other things to do. There's yeah. other jobs part-time you can do. Like, Especially now, I mean, it's the same in the U.S. I guess um, yeah. with the, you know, with the great resignation that is happening uh, with you guys. I mean, right here there is so much work, and there's not enough people not actually enough for people. it. Yeah. Mm-mm. So there's always there's always work to find. Like yes. again, that's the worst case scenario. Yeah. And if you can live with that, then you're golden. You're good to go. Yeah, definitely. Final question. <laughs> bring it to me. What is still something that you really want for your business? Um, Maybe some new developments you'd like to share, or maybe small things like, for instance, I don't know, work only one week a month. I'm just Mm -hmm. making something up here or uh, going on that Europe trip for six months and do one coaching call in those six months. (laughs) (laughs) I love that question. Definitely more travel. Um, yes. The only yes. thing about traveling for a month or two or three at a time is I can't bring Pearl with me and I'm no. so attached. I don't know if I could <laughs> leave her for literally, yes. I don't think I can leave her for that long. She's my child. Like, I don't think I could. <laughs> uh, so I don't know if that's, cause that was definitely the dream years and years ago, but that was before I had her. And so my dream has definitely shifted a bit, but I would say mm-hmm. just being able to have that freedom, which I do now have because of the strong foundations I've created in my business in terms of my core programs I have that run evergreen, like because we're able to fill our programs and sign new clients weekly into all of our programs, I now am able to step away and have the flexibility to create anything I want to. And we have some exciting, I can't share yet, but I've got some new like courses and just new projects in the works. But when you're able to build a business the way that I've built mine, like I can create a course about how to be like a fun cat mom if I wanted to. <laughs> like that's the freedom I've been wanting to create and I have created. Yes. Um, but I definitely do have some exciting projects in the works, some new things coming for even some next level projects as well. I'm um, continuing to expand the podcast mm-hmm. uh, because that's a big, 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 fun, exciting project. Yes. But definitely just some new courses and new programs coming. Yeah, I I love that, and I'm uh, very much looking forward to to seeing all about <laughs> that, and also really yes, creating that that life of freedom. And one of the things that I really like about you and your approach and your courses, what I've learned from you is setting up. I'm just setting up my first funnel, mm-hmm. and. Facebook as you know, understanding that and not making it something ooh scary, but just you know, going going for it, 
and mm -hmm. really starting to automate all those things and processes. And that's really something that I haven't really put into practice yet, but now I know how to do it. So yeah, that's, and that's you're exciting. Gonna, you're going to fall in love with it. Yes. <laughs> and, you know, I do see my business at some point, I could see it pivoting again and transitioning a bit more as mm. I continue to get older. I think right now though, I just, I love being in my business and coaching and supporting my clients Yeah, that I'm actually, and I have a feeling this is more rare than I think than I felt it has been in the past, but I do think it's fairly rare, but I'm inside of every single one of my programs yes. and support my clients in, at every single level. And I think most coaches will usually remove themselves completely from some of the lower level programs. But for the time being, I love, love, love being in and being able to create that impact and support all of them at some level. I'm definitely like supporting my clients at my high, the higher levels much more than the lower level. Mm -hmm. But for now, the time being, definitely that. Will it be that way forever? Probably not. Mm -hmm. But like even now, like, I'm able to do that and I absolutely love it. Love it, yeah. love it, love it. And again, it's about the business you want to create for yourself. Yeah, definitely. Yeah, and I can tell that you love it because you know, you're always there and with best advice. So yeah, really love it. Thank you mm -hmm. so much, Melissa. You're welcome. We're going to have to do this again. Pearl's napping yes. over there. She's like literally in the sunshine <laughs> napping. So I, mean, I, she's not, I yeah. don't know if she's going to make it over here, but next time we'll do this again. Maybe we'll do next part time. Two. We'll bring yes. all the kitties, all the kittens so that they can just have their little co-coaching session and we'll record yeah. it and put it to, publish it to the podcast. <laughs> yes, let's do it. I mean, Bamboo is sitting right here in a basket. She's disappeared in a basket. It's so cute. <laughs> and and Ludo is actually stretched out on the on the couch. They always Aww. join because you know they like it when you talk. My cats yeah. do. I think mm -hmm. Pearl does as well. Yeah. She does. <laughs> That's so cute. Like if I leave, if I get up and walk around the house, she just comes and like follows me around. It just, it melts my heart. It's so yes. cute. <laughs> well, I think we could, yeah, just record one hour episode about our cats and how cute yes. they are. So let's, let's keep that for the next time. <laughs> we will, I would we love will. to, I would love to. Um, <laughs> thank you so much, Melissa, for sharing your business advice, your personal life updates and uh, your learnings uh, from the past. And um, I also want to thank you so much for listening to this podcast. Um, I've left all of Melissa's details, her Instagram accounts, her website, everything in the show notes and go check her out. I think she's an amazing person and businesswoman. And I was mm. so honored you were here. Well, Thanks. thank you so much for having me. I had mm. so much fun. Let's do it again. And ladies, get out there. Gentlemen, get out there. Go serve, serve, serve. And just have fun with it. Find a way to have yes. fun with sales. I love it. Thank you so much, Melissa. Do you know that feeling when you're on holiday and you're truly relaxed and inspired and you know exactly what to do in your business? Then I have something for you. This summer, my private podcast series, Your Summer Reset, launches for you to take your summery glow into your business. The private episodes are all about self-love in your business, implementing healthy habits for your body and mind, and becoming a client magnet because of your raised level of attraction. Waitlist is open now and you can enjoy a pre-order discount if you're on the waitlist. Hope to see you there.